what are two Torontarians from <laughs> Ontario going to talk about for 20 minutes when they're both in love with improv and not Toronto because neither of us live there anymore, right, Mr. Kilbane? I still love Toronto. I do. I do. I do. Yeah, I love Toronto. Toronto's a great city. Is it? Nope. Oh, I don't like it. I'm going there Toronto tomorrow to pick up my boyfriend from Barcelona who's coming to visit my family. And I'm like, uh, oh, what do I show him in Toronto? It's a bunch of trees and cool <laughs> oh, and cool neighborhoods and cold water. I don't know. What do you love about Toronto? What do you miss? I mean, my family is in Toronto. And I, I... <laughs> not Toronto, the family, brother. Um, there's lots of things. We oh. we could talk about Toronto as an improv city. We could we could talk about that. I'm I'm fine with talking about that too. Uh, did you learn improv there? I did. I came up through Second City. That's uh that's right. Uh, and I also like in high school. I'm I'm one of you know a hundred thousand child prodigies of improv through the like. It was, was Sears Improv Festival that was big for me, but you know yeah. there was. There's a, a serious theater festival that had improv in it, it had theater sports in it. So, wow. Yeah. yeah so, I want, why did Toronto get so famous for improv? Like, and Chicago's like number one, right? And then Toronto became pretty famous. Was it because Second City opened up here or? That's my guess. That would be my guess. It's just the scene lent itself to that, I guess, because yeah. of uh, the SCTV lineage. Mm -hmm. the, the the legacy that SCTV left behind in Toronto and yeah. all those people. Okay, cool. So I learned in Oakville. So yeah. any of our Australian or European friends that are watching this right now are going to tune off in 30 seconds if we don't stop talking about <laughs> they don't know. Hey, Julie Trell. <laughs> okay, Julie's with us. We don't want to lose her. So let's talk about something that she'll care about. Um, Julie's sure. got a lot of energy and she's super fun. I met her in Vancouver at the Applied Improvisation Network. And Julie's, I know that. I'm, I know Julie. Julie's, Julie's great. Hello, yeah. Julie. She's super great. She looks like she's 25 years younger. She's like a ball of energy. She's adorable. We walked like down stupid hills or up. I don't know. It was horrible walking in Vancouver. <laughs> I'm not a walker. I am a player. Playa boy. So I started improv in Oakville, which is a place, beautiful place beside Toronto. And then I moved to Barcelona because of improv and because they had Barcelona improv group. And I, it was mm. so important that it was like, on my list of where would I move? Thailand, oh, good food, great weather, but no improv. <gasps> Moving to Barcelona. How much do you love improv? Am I just getting too excited here? Oh Why do you love it? Yeah. Oof, oh my God, too many. That's this. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we only have 20 minutes. Um, wow. uh, how much do I love improv? I mean, it's, I, I was thinking about this recently. Um, I love it so much. I love it so much. It's it, 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 inexplicable how much I love it. Um, <laughs> But one thing that I was thinking about recently is that we talk about living improv lives and like in, like ingraining improv mentality in, in a lot of what we do. Or you know, I, I watched some of your previous interviews, so to use um, uh, Paul's example, to use our stance, what our stance is, um, we we could talk about. Uh, like I, I realized I was part of this panel. Let me go back a second. I was part of this panel last week where it was um, an academic friend of mine who was interviewing people who wor worked in the arts industry and had some extensive period working time in the arts industry. For those people that don't know, I, I'm one of the founders of Improv Theatre Sydney here in Sydney, Australia. Mm -hmm. And um, she was interviewing a, a whole bunch of us. I would along like how we got started in the arts and how would people she was for first year students so giving first year students an idea of how you get to where you might have got to in the arts um and i realized that uh through this opportunity to reflect through this opportunity to talk about it that i had done so many i had made so many mistakes and i had uh really um, tried out so many things that didn't go well. Um, and, but because they didn't go well, I found other ways of doing them and I found new opportunities in doing them. And in talking about it, I was like, I actually did improv 
in life. Like I, I like all the things that we try to tell people when we're coaching improv or when we're like doing uh, corporate training using improv that we speak about. Um, I, I hadn't really wholly reflected on how much of my life and my life progression has been because of improv. Um, whereas like the parts that were like, that I had tried to script, the parts mm -hmm. that I was like, um, this is where I see myself going. This is a trajectory that I'm going to take. Pfft, never, never, <laughs> like, never, that never took hold. Um, uh -huh. Parts where I was like, well, oh, yeah, well, yeah, let's do that. And, and let's see how this kind of thing mm. goes. So I think uh, when you ask, like, how much do I love improv? I think last week doing that panel, I I grew a new appreciation on top of the love mm. that I already have for That's it. Expressible. Um, wow. Yeah. So Julie says it's therapy. And uh, on that note, from my side, I healed so much fear and shame through improv and clowning, which clowning is improv yeah. on cocaine, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, improv shifted my entire way of looking at every problem that comes. Like I still cry and I still eat like a dozen cookies when like shit hits the fan. Mm -hmm. But almost everything I'm like, yeah, and like this end to find mm -hmm. the positive and to go towards something better mm -hmm. with somebody else is like so there in my life that people start calling me like the yes end woman. And I'm like, oh my God, I want that on my gravestone. Like, yes, and like, yeah, I, I was late and I apologize. Yeah, like I never go to the gym and I'm working on it. Like there's no denying <laughs> with the, the good and the bad of life. It's like, it's accepting life and going forward. And then the moving forward with it. Yeah, great. I love yeah. that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I think I live it too. I just never really thought about it too much. So it was nice hearing how it's a part of our lives that we might not be able to even reflect on it because we're a fish in our own water. We don't really see right mm. how we act all the time but big, like, it was it wasn't like just given that opportunity to actually somebody asking me in this panel last week like how we got there i was like all right because somebody else was asked what are the specific skills that you need um mm -hmm. that should be put on a cv if you want to get into the arts industry and and i realized actually the skill that benefited me the most was knowing that i don't know fuck all <laughs> that I like, <laughs> and and like digging in deep into what I don't know, and yeah. trying to yeah. learn, and being and being open, and listening, and like having that kind of improv availability, where I'm like, yeah, yeah. that I'm I'm gonna try that, um, and and uh, yeah, and you ended up far, far, far away from good old Toronto and your family, beautiful Toronto, on the other side of the world, 14 hours ahead of us in Australia with a, a mm. wife and children teaching improv at the university. Like, I, what a yeah. dream. Yeah, so it's funny because it, it, here at UTS, the, the university where I'm a, I'm a lecturer, so I, I also worked in magazines and publishing, so I was a lecturer in okay. um, journalism and, a, and like sociology, social and political sciences here. Um, uh, but because I have this like other life that's improv life, uh, uh, you know, colleagues of mine were speaking to me and I was telling them how I used to do work with a friend of mine in, at the time it was in Philadelphia, where we, I came to Philadelphia to do work with peace theater, um, to use improv to teach at risk youth conflict management skills, conflict, yeah, management skills, not resolution, but management skills. Um, and so colleagues of mine at the university were like, huh, that's really good. We should do that here. And then, and that kind of proliferated. So we went and working with school groups here through the university. Um, and then other people were like, actually, we should use this to uh, kind of level, we should use this to help people in tutorials. And we started this whole program where we're using improv to level the playing field of discourse, where like some students feel really comfortable talking in class and mm -hmm. would participate actively and mm -hmm. like listen, not as much, whereas other students are, you know, less vocal. 
in class and we would use improv to try to balance out like, okay, those that talk a lot need to listen more. And those yeah. that um, haven't participated need to find out, find their voice in class and need to find out how they think about those things, even if it's working through it and, in, in, you know, giving us an opportunity to learn about those things. Um, so here at, at UTS, that's, that's how I've kind of embedded it into kind of pedagogical structures. Um, For, well, why I love improv so much is exactly what you're talking about. It's like equal speaking time. It's like, yes, I heard you and I add this to it. It's not like, yes, 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 you're the king, keep talking. I got to add or else I make my partner do all the work. So you've got to speak almost equally or contribute energy or gestures or you got to be very present. That psychological, well, you know, I'm, I'm sure you know this, but for our viewers, psychological safety, um, mm. when they investigated at Google in the Google Aristotle project, they found out that there are two components of the thriving teams that the other so-so teams don't have. And it was equal speaking time and empathy and mm. improv is like, that's pure psychological safety is like mm. we each say a sentence and we go towards a scene together and I make you look good. Whatever stupid thing you say, I go like, yeah. And da da da. it's, it's just like, it's built in to create better relationships. If you practice this enough, your relationships shift because it's repeated and you listen and you say yes and, and you like, it doesn't mean you agree with it, but you hear them, you see them and you collaborate with them. Like how can we not become better humans mm. by doing it? Do you know anyone that's become a worse human by doing improv? <laughs> name them. <laughs> name and shame. <laughs> name and shame them. Because they failed the system. The system failed them. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, I do not. By by genuinely doing improv? No, I do not. I know people that have become like, that have exposed themselves as, as people that need a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> through improv. Um, that people yeah. like who come to realize, oh, they don't listen, or maybe they don't come to realize they, they don't listen. Um, yeah. And then nobody wants to do scenes with them. Yeah. <laughs> like, why am I always monologuing? I love it. Well, because no one jumps on stage with you because you don't listen, bro. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. But like, when you, if you had asked me that question two weeks ago, what I love about improv, I, I would have, I would have given you that that answer that you just said, like about like about the opportunity in, in making everybody else look good and that that kind of jazz of like yeah. ooh that thing. That thing. Let's play that beat now, because um, I, I, that's what I love, and that's that's what constantly comes back to my mind when I when I think about like when did my heart skip a beat with improv? It's always those moments of like, here's the dumbest fucking thing, um, but because everybody is jumping on board, it looks brilliant, and that that kind of um, collaborative community exercise is. Mm -hmm uh it's unbeatable that's that's hmm. it's you're unbelievable believe beatable <laughs> but and if we we're doing improv you would repeat my wrong lyrics and you would make me look good and that's <laughs> that's how like friendships get built right like that girl yeah those are the new lyrics for this scene and we yeah. are singing off tune as much as she is and you're gonna mirror me and you're gonna make me look good and it's um it's so beautiful. Nowhere in life do people like go into a conversation with you wanting to make you look good. Half the time I'm like, I'm going to make them look if they're bad, <laughs> you know, like my, my petty side, my jealous side, whatever that side is. If I don't have those rules in place, I could become a little bit of a bitch. You said the F word twice. I guess I can say that bad word too. No, I'm sorry. Should I not have sworn? I'm so sorry. I apologize. I'm in no? Australia. No one, no one. Oh, there's no swear? Yeah. Yeah. There's no, oh, there's no there's rules. Can you no. swear in university? I do all the time. You do? You're a swearing professor with poofy hair and a hoodie? You're like kick ass. Is that yeah. the Australia vibe? Yeah, I, I mold minds. That's real. That's real fun. I mold, I mold minds and gel my hair. It's just who I am. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, it's so, yeah. It's, it's funny, like looking at, because I also teach it. Um, an acting school and when I work with actors mm -hmm. and I work with this idea of like trying to figure out the multiplicities of ways that, that 
their characters are speaking and the their scene partners are saying things so like trying to get them to listen as hard as possible like listen 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 um, and see all the myriad of things that they're listening to uh some some performers get it real well um and some performers because they're so because of where they might have come from with their craft they're so inside themselves they're like but but no, i want to know about me and <laughs> I'm like, I, you shouldn't that's the wrong place in this class that's the <laughs> wrong place for your head to be um, I, I want your head to be over there and thinking mm -hmm. about them and wow. and this will come naturally um, wow. because you can't help we're all, we're all human. We can't help but react a certain way. Um, but if you are genuinely listening and yeah. giving pause and giving space to actually genuinely listen with whatever your character needs, you as a as a performer and you as a co uh, like a, a scene partner, you have to have empathy for the other player. But your character doesn't necessarily have to have empathy. Mm. Um, so mm. what's the filter that you're listening to that through? And what's ex what's so exciting to see is like, okay, now let, let's ask you uh, if you recognize how you as a person, at the end of class, you do a little like therapy exercise where you're like, how mm. do you actually listen to people? Or do you listen to, or like specific people? Do you listen to your mom this way? Do you listen to yeah. your partner this way? Right? And, and and then people are like, oh, shit, I am always like, you know, listening. I, my mom asked me how my day is. And I'm always like, get off my back. You're like, you just stop like trying to interrogate me. Right. And like things like like that, like when we start using, um, you know, the simple things that we do in improv to have fun and play around with, but realize actually this is a reflection of how I maintain my actual relationships in real life and it's so hard it's so hard to do like you had this conversation i think you had this conversation with uh john trevor um i watched, I watched it i i looked, I looked at about how like you know when we go in and we coach these things in corporate settings or in like in, in these kinds of often in one-off settings we can say it and we can get it like intellectually, but mm -hmm. without practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's so hard. Um, and you know, like we all know people and we are all some people always where we're like, oh, this, this person needs improv. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, this person, <laughs> this person. <laughs> That's person is undateable until they do some improv classes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they should put on Tinder, done improv classes, yes or no. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, which I don't know if that's, that's not a cool thing. It's not the. <laughs> cool. <laughs> my God, I love it. So I was a bad listener most of my life because I was very self-focused and pretty happy, <laughs> I have to say, until I started therapy and learned that I'm not a very good listener and I'm quite self-focused. And I was like, crap, can't live my life like that. And did like improv clowning steady, like eight years every week. And mm -hmm. alongside of like doing gestalt therapy, I became a therapist and now I'm like a, a laughter therapist or I, I teach with um, humor to, to heal mm -hmm. that stuff. And it's like, I can see what I used to be like, especially when I'm home with my mom and dad for summer, right? I'm like, I'm no longer that person. I don't know if they see it. <laughs> But I know inside that I've shifted so much. And like people tell me, you're such a great listener. I'm like, who are you talking about? Like, it's not me. Like, it happened only because I was staring I was at that blue dot over there the whole time. I wasn't <laughs> listening to a single word. I wasn't. <laughs> it happened without me even trying to, because if I wanted to do improv clown and still have friends and after therapy at lunchtime, I mm. had to learn better because I mm. couldn't sustain relationships or any kind of happiness without it. And it's like, and I learned it in a really fun way. So it's like, it's such a beautiful way to develop new habits. Like before there should be like therapy training for like newlyweds, <laughs> you know? 
you know, because it, it, it shifts it. It really shifts behavior mm -hmm. and qualities and personalities. Like I'm a different person because of it. Better or worse? No idea. Ask my mom. Mom. <laughs> She's in the next room. So. Uh, are they coming? Is your mom? I would love <laughs> I didn't yell out enough. would run up there. She's very sweet. Now I think she's sweet. You know, that also shifted. She didn't change, but I now think she's sweet when I used to think she was not sweet. Oh, and man. I just, you know? Yeah, I had the same experience, yeah. Yeah, we just moved away from our moms and did improv. You in Australia, me in Barcelona. Julie says she found people put um, uh, people in better moods on stage. And, uh, oh, and she also took classes at ITS. And, uh, oh, yeah, someone says listening is the key. Amen. We're going to end on that. Listening is the key. Improv will change your life. Are we preaching to the choir? If anyone who hasn't tried improv and they live in uh, Sydney, well, call Mr. Bain. Call him Mr. Bain. Call him Mr. Wrong. Call him insane, insane. You know, come on, 90s dance. Hi, Mr. Bain. Yep, I got it. I got it. <laughs> we could sing Purple Bain. We could sing I'm So Bain. We got it. We got, I got a whole discussion. Oh, your name is awesome. <laughs> no songs written with my name. Nothing rhymes with Breitenfeld or probably Rammstein. There's like, kill Breitenfeld. Something horrible. Okay, it's been cool. a pleasure. Um, a pleasure indeed. Thank you so much for the time. As the Canadians say, thanks for shooting the shit with me and uh, just talking, but it's awesome. <laughs> Teaser some of the improv spark fest on Monday. Julie's plugging something happening. Oh, yeah. What'd she say? Yeah, the spark fest on Monday. Um, Monday. And that's, a, that's a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's also, there's, yeah, improv theater Sydney. Just, have a look. Have a look. We're 10 years old now. We're, we're a 10 year old improv company. That doesn't wow. happen. That's beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. Okay. When I'm on your side of the world one day, I will take a kangaroo and hop your way. Um, and if you're in Toronto one day, we shall meet live one day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.